Hey there, this video is all about my high tunnel, how I built it, but I'm also going to talk to you about if you should build your own or buy a kit and some other good tips about having a high tunnel or greenhouse. Hi, I'm Josh Satin and I run Satin Hill Farm and there's a lot of new subscribers to the channel so welcome, thank you so much for following along. Um, I'm, I'm really glad to connect with you guys and hopefully you're gaining a lot of useful information to help you guys grow better food if you're just doing this on a homesteading level or if you're doing this on a commercial farm. So I just want to share to you today uh, about the greenhouse. Um, technically it's a high tunnel, it's not heated, uh, there's, it's totally passive, there's no power on it or anything. Uh, I, this is a very requested video and I'm more than happy to share with you guys. But before I get into it, I want to make a couple of points here. Now, when I built this tunnel last year, it was before my first season, and I'm, I'm a very DIY guy. I want to try to save as much money as possible. But in retrospect, I should have bought a kit for this. And this is not a sponsored video in any way, but I would totally buy a kit from Farmer's Friend. Uh, if you're up towards the range of 50 or, or larger, for 50 feet or larger for a tunnel, just buy a kit. Um, this, this one here is not mobile, and you guys know I love portable stuff. Uh, I spent a lot of time on this. I really didn't save that much money. Um, so in retrospect, I would have done that. Now, I know a lot of you guys are interested in how I put this together, so I definitely want to talk about that. And I also want to just show you a couple little things that might help you set up your tunnel or help you make some decisions about that. All right, so we'll get into some of the specifics here and how I put this together first. Um, so this tunnel is 12 feet wide by 48 feet long. And there was a couple reasons for that. My beds are 50 feet long. I just could not get like a 54, 56 foot tunnel in here just with the space constraint that I had. I was, I put this in in a spot where I just, I wanted to you know, make sure I could still get around uh, the tunnel and just sort of where it fits. So my beds are a little bit shorter in here. So these is a 48 foot tunnel. I have 44 foot beds. So I only have two feet on either end, which is, a, which is very tight. Um, the hoops here are made out of um, electrical conduit. Uh, the, the PVC kind, so um, you can get PVC in white, which is what you normally see, and then you can also get it in the electrical aisle, and it's this gray stuff, and supposedly it's a little bit more UV resistant, so that's what I went with. These, this, the hoops are 20 feet, so there's two 10-foot sections, and they're glued together in the middle, and they sit inside um, some larger diameter pipe that goes in the ground. This is a one and a half inch PVC, and the pieces that are in the ground that the, um, the hoops fit into are two inch. And I don't remember the length of those, but I, I forget maybe two and a half or three feet and I drove them in the ground a little bit. Uh, and I'll show you that too. Now, the other option for making tunnels is using um, top rail, which is a galvanized uh, metal and they last forever, but you do need a some sort of bender for that. And at the time I just was being cheap and I didn't want to buy, pay for the bender. Uh, so I used conduit. Now, the, uh, the one thing about uh, using PVC is that the PVC will react with the polyethylene, the greenhouse plastic. And so what you have to do is either cover it with um, tape or you can paint it. I've heard people paint it. I just use duct tape. So I had to, after I built the hoops, cover the entire top part of the surface with duct tape so that it wouldn't react with the polyethylene. I guess it burns it. So um, you don't want to make, you want to make sure that happens. This greenhouse plastic is the standard six mil greenhouse plastic. It's supposed to last uh, four years. And uh, so far, it's, it's been holding up pretty well. So some design considerations that I had about the greenhouse that I wanted to put together, at the time, I, I thought it was important to have um, actual doors, which now I could care less about. Um, the reality for me is that I'm using this tunnel for green produ greens production and season extension over wintering. So I have greens in here from, you know, like October through March, and then in the summer, I'm doing tomatoes and maybe some other uh, uh, warm weather stuff. But right now it's just full of tomatoes. So for your context with your climate, you have to consider you know, what you're gonna be using the tunnel for. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing greens in the shoulder seasons and over winter, and then we're gonna be doing tomatoes and maybe some uh, eggplants in here uh, later in the summer. So you gotta keep in mind what you wanna use your tunnel for. Now, I don't have a lot of height in this tunnel, and that is something that really bothers me. Now, in, I have no problem walking through here, but I'll show you inside. You'll see the tomatoes are just like up to the top. Now, there is a way you can raise this up when you build it, is those pieces on the side where the hoops pop into, you could just make those pieces of um, PVC taller so that it gets raised. I actually wanted to do that, but <laughs> the problem was once I did that, I couldn't see, my, my back porch is over here, and I couldn't see over the tunnel from my back porch, and I just decided 
I just don't want to look at plastic when I look at my back porch. So there's context to everything, guys. Uh, that would not have been a big uh, expense, but you know it would have made a lot of improvement. Now, raising the tunnel up is great if you can if you want to do that because then the beds on the sides they will have a lot more height and it's easier to work with tools. And if you're trellising stuff, they'll have more height there too. So on the end wall here, um, you know a lot of this is just figure out as you go. I didn't really have plans for this. Um, this is just built out of a bunch of wood and uh, and sort of slapped together. Uh, so let me show you some other stuff that's going on here in, in detail. All right, so the base that goes around the whole thing is made out of two by six pressure treated lumber. And I did a lot of research about pressure treated and some people are against using it. So you can make your decision about that. I'm not gonna get into that discussion here, uh, but I just didn't wanna worry about it so much. And so they're long pieces and then um, they just get sistered together like this. I used, um, another piece of wood here and everything is screwed together to hold those pieces um, together uh, down the length of it. You can see them all the way down there. Now the, let me show you the, the posts here. Um, so this is the, the two inch PVC and this is the, the one and a half inch PVC that the hoops are made out of. Um, and so I just have a bolt going through here with a washer and a nut. And then at the bottom, I have a carriage bolt uh, that goes through the wood um, and then goes through and there's a nut and washer on the inside as well. And that pretty much holds the hoops and the, the baseboards together. Um, I just have tape around this because I was concerned about the, I have roll up sides here and I was kind of concerned about it um, hitting this little edge here and ripping. So uh, I just have that little bit taped up. So again, this is a real DIY job and I just, I'm going to share it with you guys. All right, now inside the tunnel. So we got our hoops and let me show you how they go together. So you hopefully you can see up here, this is where the two uh, 10 foot pieces got glued together and then I have a uh, ridge pole across the top and again that's the same one and a half inch conduit it's hard to see this while the tomatoes gone in here um, and then I just have a bolt coming from the top down there's a washer nut here and you want to make sure that you do it this way because you want the top of it to be smooth so that the plastic isn't rubbing against that right there all right but as you can see in here guys I, I have just getting crazy tomato production here um, just an awesome way to grow tomatoes um, and so you know, one of the big things about my context here is it's not so much the, um, you know, getting an early start in the season, that sort of thing. We're in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. It's pretty warm and, and nice here um, a lot of the year. Uh, but the bigger issue for us is rain. We get so much rain in the in the fall and winter, especially like with hurricane season and just all winter. I mean, we do get a little bit of snow here too, but the, a lot of the times it's just great to keep the rain off of things. All right, another thing I want to show you here is I put in what's called, I think they're called hip boards along the sides here, and that just gives a lot of stability and also gives me a place to mount the plastic uh, because I have roll-up sides. This is one by four lumber, I believe. And again, the longer they're just long pieces and then they're sistered together. You can see that here. And um, just like the bottom, I have a bolt going through the outside and then a nut and a washer on the inside. So let me show you how the plastic attaches to this. So we got here, we got the one by four on the inside and then these are one by twos. And so what I did was the, the plastic comes down this way and uh, this top one is just screwed flush with the top of that one by four. So you pull the plastic over tight with uh, on top of this one by two and then as you're you know, pulling it tight here, you need, a, you need a friend to help you with this. Uh, you put this one by two in and that's what holds it in. Now, if you just screw in, um, the only place that's really holding it are just where the screws are. So by doing it this way, you get a nice tight edge here and the tension's pretty even. And that way, you know, the plastic's being held on by this whole one by, this whole one by two and not just a couple of screws or staples or whatever. A couple other things about the plastic here. This one piece of plastic that does the, most of the, the top of it, uh, it does wrap over here and then it's tied in here with the same sort of system with the one by four and one by twos. Also tied in here. We left it a little bit long over here. So a little bit of overlap and it was cut. And then this bottom piece is a separate piece. It goes around this way to the bottom and uh, right here as well. Um, I don't know, that's just what seemed to work. Now, uh, whenever you pull plastic over the end walls, if you don't attach them, uh, you could also use wiggle wire, which is super cool. Again, I was being cheap when I when I built this, so I didn't buy any. I was trying to avoid buying some. Uh, there'll be some ripples, and these are stretched out a little bit. They were a lot tighter when I did this. Uh, but make sure when you do these like sort of creases or ripples that you do it so it's facing downwards, because if you did it the other way, they would just hold water. So just you know keep that in mind for sure. And then the door. Let me show you the door over here. The door is very similar. Uh, these are two by threes that make up the door frame, and same idea with the plastic on the inside 
Uh, they're just, um, these I actually didn't use two one by twos. Uh, I just put in one by twos and screwed them in. It was just a small piece. I figured if the plastic gets ruined, it's pretty easy to replace. And then uh, just uh, threw a latch on here too. And uh, pretty uh, pretty straightforward construction. Um, this These are just tied in here with some uh, straps that go over the top. And these pieces here, these one by fours are just screwed in here. And uh, there's a little bit of a support here to hold the plastic on the inside. I don't know. I, I literally was just like figuring this out as I went along. I think there's not a lot of information uh, about end wall construction from what I could find online. A lot of people talk about how to build, you know, hoops and, and stuff like that. And end walls, it's like, oh man, I just figure it out. So that, that's what I did. Um, but hopefully this gives you an idea. Uh, you're just going to have to be a little bit uh, resourceful and creative and, you know, kind of figure things out if you want to go to this route. Let's talk ventilation and roll up sides. Uh, I did put roll up sides on here and I do really like this feature um, with some of the other tunnels on the market um, it's pretty simple you can raise and lower the sides of the plastic pretty easily um, but this I, I do like the roll-up sides and it was part of my design here so the way this works is this is three-quarter inch electrical conduit and I think there's five ten foot pieces and there's couplings um, that hold the pieces together and then over here I have a, a 90 degree fitting and then this is like a sweep that you can buy uh, pre-bent and the way this works is the plastic is just rolled up um, on the conduit and then as you turn the handle it just rolls it up and then I have a rope here that um, you just we tie a knot and it just keeps the handle from from moving and uh, the way that the conduit is attached to the plastic on the side I use these clips here and I think I got these from Johnny's I'll find a link and I'll, I'll post for you guys they've been working okay they do fall off on occasion but um, that way you don't have to screw anything in or anything like that the other thing about ventilation is the doors on the sides open and when it gets really hot I make sure I open everything. Uh, for me here in my context, um, I actually wouldn't even have walls on the ends of mine during the summer. It's so hot here. I mean, most of the summer it's over 90 degrees here and so maximum ventilation is, is key. And uh, so yeah, keep all these things in mind um, when, you, when you design your tunnel. If you're curious about the trellising setup, I did a whole video about trellising. I'll put a link right there too so you can check that out. Uh, in terms of sourcing materials for this project, Pretty much everything I got from Lowe's or Home Depot. And uh, the only thing I think I ordered were those clips which I showed you, and then the greenhouse plastic. Make sure you use greenhouse plastic. Don't use stuff you get at Home Depot or Lowe's. That stuff's not uh, UV uh, resistant. So uh, I think I ordered this plastic from Farmer's Friend, but I've also ordered some greenhouse plastic from Bootstrap Farmer uh, for my low tunnels. Both were great. So um, those are two sources for you guys to check out. Um, I think I bought a 28 foot wide roll for this tunnel, so that gave me 20 feet for the hoops and then a few extra feet uh, on the sides. And don't get it exactly because you won't have enough uh, extra in terms of width, but also in length, you need to do the end walls and stuff like that too. I feel like I'll get some questions about what's going on here, so I might as well just tell you. Um, I got tomatoes in here, they're on 12 inch spacing. These two rows are 18 inches apart. On the outside, they're also 12 inch spacing. And I have some basil interplanted on the outside and they seem to be doing okay. And uh, so that's what's going on in here. And a lot of people ask me about lower and lean. I'm not doing that this year. I might consider that next year, but this tunnel's really tight. I'm just gonna grow them up and get the fruit off of them I can. And I'm probably gonna do a second succession later in the summer and then into the fall. So let's talk layout inside the tunnel. Now I said it's a 12 foot wide tunnel, so we can do some quick calculations here. I originally had four beds in here. And to do that, I had, I think they were 27 inch beds and uh, 12 inch walkways just to try to squeeze four beds in here. And you know, I'm trying to get the most production as possible out of here, but it was just miserable in here last year, especially with, with um, trellising crops. So I changed my um, layout here um, after I pulled out the tomatoes last summer. And so what I have in here now are two 30 inch beds on the sides. I have 18 inch walkways and the middle bed is actually 40 inches. And you guys know I like to standardize my stuff. And so all the, the field blocks and the field beds outside are all, you know, they're all 30 inch by 50 foot beds, but in here it's just, they're just oddballs. And it's okay, I just work with it. Um, so the 30 inch beds are great because it's standard for me. The 40 inch bed was kind of interesting, um, but for me it, was, it actually worked out well because when I'm doing greens in here in the winter, you know, for lettuce, I usually put four rows on a bed. I just put five on a bed and I just got a little more production. So that was cool. Um, and then the idea behind that also was that the middle bed here, um, I'm just doing two rows of tomatoes together and that kept the, the, the tallest crops in the middle so I could try to keep a pathway in here. It's really tight in here when the tomatoes get big and I don't know, I'm trying to keep on top of the pruning this year, but uh, you know, it, it is a lot of work. So I will uh, 
you know, I need to do a little bit more pruning work in here. But that's the layout in here. Now, if you're curious about the irrigation setup in here, please check out my irrigation video. I'll leave a, uh, a link right there so you can check that out. Um, but other than that, yeah, things have been working out great in here. It's a nice little tunnel. Um, you also want to keep in mind that a cost and time, I mean, as I said before, the Farmer's Friend Tunnel, I've seen so many other market gardeners use them and they're really inexpensive and you can put them together in a couple hours and you can move them. So that I, get, I can't move this, this is just, this is here. Um, and that, that's just the reality. Uh, so keep all that in mind. Um, I think if, you know, if I was building a, a small tunnel, maybe for a nursery or something like that, where maybe it was 20 feet, or maybe you just, you know, you just want to build a really small one on your property and you can probably put this together maybe, you know, without some of the other options on here for a little bit cheaper, maybe this is a good option for you. Um, but you know, I just want to share this with you. I know a lot of you guys were, you know, asking to see my tunnel and all the details. And so here you go. I, I'm more than happy to share this information with you guys. Uh, any other ideas on videos, please let me know in the comments below or hit me up a, uh, with a message on Instagram. Uh, if you haven't checked out my Instagram page, I post every day on there. So if you want to see more about what's going on the farm, check that out too. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm just trying to get some more information out to you guys and help you with your growing and and again, thanks for watching. So please like the video, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel. It's all very helpful to get this information out to as many people as possible. And we'll see you in the next one.